up to 173 tons, blue whales are the largest animals known to have existed. Rourke wolves, family Balanopteridae, all share a unique feeding style known as lunch filter feeding, yet they range in size from the blue whale down to the five-ton minke whale. As opposed to the continuous ram filtration style of manta rays, right whales, bowhead whales, work wolves feed by an intermittent ram filtration system where they can engulf up to 140% of their body mass with a single gulp. Work wolf lunges have three phases, acceleration, engulfment, and filtering. This paper focuses on the overlap of the acceleration and the engulfment phases. Marine mammals accumulate an oxygen debt while foraging. This is only energetically worthwhile when prey is dense and foraging is efficient. Because of the high drag required for engulfment and the energy required to accelerate an engulfed water mass, lunge feeding is thought to incur a high energetic cost. But just how costly has proven difficult to determine. Only in the last decade have multi-sensor packages been reduced in size enough to deploy on wild animals. These sensors, attached to the suction cups so that they stay on the animal for up to 24 hours before they fall off, include accelerometers, depth sensors, and magnetometers, which allow us to reconstruct the animal's behavior in the environment in which they spend the vast majority of their time. The problem is that these tags typically measure motion at just a single point on the whale, and the motion of individual body parts, like the skull and jaw, must be inferred. This led to conflicting hypotheses about the timing of engulfment events as they relate to acceleration. Rockwall whale feeding events are characterized by an increase in speed followed by a rapid decrease in speed. Now, what we haven't known until now is where on the speed profile the mouth opens and closes. So one model suggests that the mouth should open at maximum speed and close at the minimum speed. In doing so, the whale would reach maximum gape halfway through that deceleration phase on the speed profile. A competing model suggests that the mouth should open much earlier than maximum speed, reaching maximum gape right around peak speed and then closing halfway through the deceleration phase. This is really important to know because it tells us a lot about the energetic costs of this really dynamic feeding mechanism. Now, at the time these two models were constructed, there was no way to actually measure the timing of the gape cycle in relation to the speed of a wild cetacean. So for this study, we employed newly designed instruments that combine 3D accelerometry with onboard video cameras to compare the timing of the engulfment cycle in relation to lunge kinematics. Se predicen los modelos de alimentación para las ballenas fin. Las ballenas azules, incluidas aquellas en la costa de Patagonia, se alimentan de krill al aproximarse a su pacho objetivo a una velocidad de 4 metros por segundo y abren su boca a esa velocidad máxima. Luego desaceleran bruscamente al momento de engolfar ese su objetivo, el patch de krill. Not all rock whales are the same, however. Blue whales and humpback whales are different not just in size, but also morphology and foraging behavior. While blue whales are mostly obligate krill feeders, humpbacks are well known to switch prey between krill and small fish. Humpbacks also have comparably longer flippers and flukes than blue whales and are more rotund and less streamlined. This makes them generally slower but more maneuverable. In 2015, we uh, initiated uh, a tech deployment uh, of South Africa's west coast. The humpback whale feeding strategy is similar to that uh, of the blue whale in a sense that the timing of the engulfment uh, coincides with the deceleration of the body. Now, because humpback whales are generally smaller than the blue whales, um, they have more rapid cycles. They can take lots of lunges um, in a set period, but each lunge would be smaller. So that's it then. Rockwells open their mouths right at the peak in speed, and then drag slows them down. Well, that's not quite the whole story. Humpback whales are lunging at about two and a half meters per second. Blue whales up to about four meters per second, much faster than the escape response of krill. But humpback whales are generalists. What happens when they have to lunge at faster, more maneuverable prey? Humpback whales feeding on schooling fish rely on complex prey herding techniques before a lunge. 
the Stellwagen Bank and a couple other places around the world, these whales make curtains of bubbles that serve to corral and concentrate sandlands before taking a full mouth. Because these whales feed on elusive prey, the timing of when they open their mouth in relation to their maximum speed is highly variable. These animals must time their lunges to match their prey movements. So, the ability of rorquals to modulate the fine scale kinematics of the skull and body suggests that high cost foraging strategies, like increased maneuvering and variable timing of the mouth opening, can be used to capture more agile but possibly higher quality prey. In contrast, low-cost foraging methods could be employed by both study species when targeting less agile prey like krill. These trade-offs imply that the prey density thresholds necessary to support these large predators are not only dependent on differences in body size and energetic requirements, but are also determined in part by the predator's foraging capability and the prey's escape performance.